This video extends the ideas of exponents or indices to looking at cases where those, uh, those particular objects, the exponents or indices, are fractions. It also links us up with the ideas of square roots and cube roots and pretty much any other roots as well. If you haven't already watched the video on index, uh, indices and index laws, then make sure you have a look at that one first. Okay, so you probably probably already know about things called square roots. Something like the fact that the square root of four, you can say that that's equal to two. That means that two squared is equal to four, in other words. Now we can use a fractional index notation to write this as well. Anytime we see a square root, we can also write it as the number to the one half power, four to the one half. And we say that four to the one half is equal to two. And that can work because if we raise both sides to the second power, so four to the one half to the second power, and the right hand side, two to the second power, that's still okay because our index laws from back in regular index laws would allow us to multiply those two together. A half times two would give us one, four to the one is four, and two squared, of course, is four. So we've got a true statement, four is equal to four. So that's why we will be able to write things like that. So square roots can be written as the one half power. And we can do the same kind of thing with other roots as well. So the nth root, where n could be whichever number you like really, the nth root of a, we'd write that uh, with the little root notation, the radical symbol, or we could also write a to the one on n. Remember when we had the square root, we write it as four to the one on two, the one half. So the nth root is one on n power. And the result, now well, that's just the number um, that a is equal to, or sorry, that is equal to when a, uh, n a's are multiplied together. So for example, the, third, the three root, or the cube root as we say, of eight is equal to two, because if we go two times two times two, or two to the three, that's just equal to eight. So the, the undoing sort of statement of this, if you like, is the cube root. The cube root of eight is two, two cubed is eight. So 2 is the cube root of 8. That little symbol, I think I've already mentioned this actually, that we call the radical symbol. And things, in, things written with a radical symbol, we often call them surds. Now, A can have any number in its power. It doesn't have to have a 1 over something. We could have a fraction that is P over Q. Okay, so not 1 over Q, but P over Q. Well, that's actually just the same as the Qth root of A to the P. Or if you like, Qth root of A raised to the pth power. There's a bunch of different ways you can pull it apart and put it back together, essentially based on the, the basic index laws from the previous video. Now, if you want to have a play around with that yourself, maybe try it out with some, some regular numbers instead of just these a's and p's and q's. Have a look at what two to the three on two might mean and mess around with that one. Now, the index laws that we've seen already, they still apply with fractional indices, but what we can do is actually rewrite them into this sort of quite ugly set of things here. Um, and it allows us to, to look more easily at fractional versions of the same thing. So we can see some sort of root cancellation rules. If we've got the nth root of a to the n, we can rewrite that as a to the n to the one on n. And then our regular old index laws would say, well, n times one on n, that's one. So that answer is a. Well, we can also look at it this version, rewrite it like this one, and it all comes out the same. So the nth root of the nth power cancels out and leaves you with just the base. Now multiplication, this is the same as the, the regular index law, but just rewritten in a different way with fractional indices. If we've got the nth root of a and the nth root of b, it can be written as the nth root of a times b, or if you like, the one on n power of a times b. And roots of roots, this is like powers of powers. The nth root of the nth root of a, well, you can write it in power form, multiply them through, and you end up with a to the 1 on m n. And division, similarly, again, to the regular index laws, it's just that it's got fractions in it. So we can turn an nth root of a over an nth root of b to the overall nth root of a on b, provided b is not zero, of course. So that's a few more rules that you can put uh, in your set of rules, if you like. Really though, they do just follow on from the index law, so you don't really need to remember those ones uh, especially. Okay, some examples. Like usual, pause the video if you like. Give yourself a few minutes to try these out on pencil and paper by yourself, and then come back and join me and see how I go through them. 
All right, the first question, this one's a bit of an easy one. We've got the fifth root of seven raised to the fifth power. Remember back on our rules, there was a root cancellation rule. The nth root of a number to the nth power just turns out to be the base itself. So we can just write down straight away that that's seven. Or if you like, you could go through and you could say, well, that's seven to the one on five because of the root, and then all raised to the five. So it's seven to the one on five times five, one on five times five is one, seven to the one is seven. Okay, next up we've got the cube root of nine times the cube root of three. Okay, I'm kind of tempted from the start to try to figure out what the cube root of nine is, but if I jump to my calculator, I'll find it's just some ugly looking decimal. And the same with three actually. So what I might do is rewrite these as nine to the one on three and three to the one on three. And then I'll use one of my regular index laws backwards. So I'm going to put these back together and say it's 9 times 3 all to the power 1 on 3. Now 9 times 3 is 27. 27 to the 1 on 3, the cube root of 27. If I go to my calculator, I will get a nice answer for that because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So the cube root of 27 must be 3. And there we go. So we can write that one down. Uh, pretty simply, considering it was a bit ugly at the start. Okay, next example, we've got the one-fourth power, or the one-fourth root, of 16x squared y to the 8. I'm going to push that through, using my index laws to say 16 to the 1 on 4, x to the 2 times 1 on 4, and y to the 8 times 1 on 4. We can do a little bit of simplifying. 16 to the 1 on 4, I think that's 2. And I think it's 2 because, well, I could look at my calculator, but I also think 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So 2 to the 4th is 16, so the 1 4th root of 16 must be 2. Then I've got x to the 2 times 1 on 4. Well, 2 times 1 on 4 is 2 on 4, and that's just a half. So we've got x to the half, and y to the 8 times 1 on 4 is 8 on 4, which is 2. So we've got y to the 2. I could leave it like that, or if you like, you can write this back in the third form, 2 times root x times y squared, if you like, but either of them is fine. All right, our final example, d, looks like a big mess of a thing. It's the square root of a fraction. The fraction top and bottom have all sorts of stuff in them to fractional powers. We just slow down for a minute, think about it in terms of the power laws, and try to put them together in some useful way. The first thing I'll do is make sure that I get get rid of this square root symbol and rewrite it in a power form as well. So we've got all things written with powers instead of using radical symbols. So that's going to become 3x to the half, y to the 2 thirds, over 8 to the 4 thirds, x to the 4, y to the 1 on 6, and the square root becomes a 1 half power. So now we can use our index law that says that when we've got all of this stuff raised to the one-half power, we bring the one-half and multiply it by each power inside. So I'm going to have 3 to the one-half, uh, x to the one-half times one-half, y to the two-thirds times one-half, and then all divided by 8 to the four on three times one-half, x to the four, times one half, and finally y to the one on six times one half. So you can see I've moved that power to multiply through by each power inside. So we've then got three to the one half. I'm gonna leave that, there's not much I can do. X to the half times a half becomes x to the quarter. Two thirds times a half, the twos cancel and we're left with y to the one on three. Then on the bottom we have 8 to the 4 on 6, well 4 on 6 is 2 on 3. x to the 4 times a half is 2, so x squared, and y to the 1 on 12. Okay, now I can bring everything from the bottom, well the x's and the y's, I'm going to bring them up to the top but with negative powers. So I'm going to have 3 to the half over 8 to the 2 thirds still, but x to the quarter minus 2, because I've got x to the quarter divided by x to the 2, so I can combine with a subtracted power, and similarly y to the 1 third minus 1 on 12. 
Now what you might want to do here is jump off to the side to do a little bit of fraction arithmetic. 1 quarter minus 2, okay, that's 1 quarter minus 8 on 4, so that's minus 7 on 4. And similarly, 1 on 3 minus 1 on 12, we want the same denominator, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 4, so 4 on 12. Minus 1 on 12 is 3 on 12, and that is just 1 on 4. Okay, so I have 3 to the half over 8 to the 2 thirds. X is going to be to the minus 7 on 4, and Y to the 1 on 4. And I've just rewritten that again over on the next page to give myself some room. Now, getting that far, that's a pretty good effort. There's a lot of messing around in there. So getting to that's pretty well done. Now, I can see there are a couple of other things I can do in here, though. If I've got 8 to the 2 on 3, that's the same as the cube root of 8 squared, or the cube root of 64. And I know that 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Okay, so the cube root of 64 must be equal to the 4. So I can say I've got the square root of 3 on the top over 4 on the bottom. I'm going to put this negative power down underneath. So I'm going to have x to the positive 7 on 4. And then leave up the top y to the 1 on 4. And that I'd be pretty happy with as a result for that question. Okay. So, in this video, we've moved on from regular indices and exponents to indices and exponents that involve fractions, allowing us to look at uh, square roots and cube roots and all those sorts of things. And we've seen these ideas of thirds and, and how you can reduce fractions uh, and expressions involving these kind of index expressions. So, there's some rules for those, but remember the rules were pretty much just the same index rules as we've seen before. Okay, if you had a bit of trouble following through those examples, make sure you go back and try them again yourself uh, and see if you can get through them, uh, maybe with my help or maybe just doing it by yourself as well. But that's it for this video.